hang in there. It's at that point that you never want to give up on your vision. Just because you don't have the resources right now, just because you don't know how you're going to do it, you got to hold on to the belief system. That's the strongest thing that you have in fulfilling a vision is that I believe this is for me. So today on the show, we are talking about vision. And this is probably in several different categories. It's probably in all the categories. It's uh, it's really where we see ourselves at, kind of a picture of I see myself working this job or I see myself running this marathon or I see myself doing this thing in the future, but you're not actually doing it yet. It kind of ties in with our episode where we're talking about faith. Yeah. Talks about it's about faith. It's and really I think this is probably mostly in the category of faith. Yeah. Yes, it is, absolutely, because it is it's visualizing yourself in a position that you're not in. But I, I let me let me share this too with our audience that vision is not just something am you know, it's not up there in this up there in the sky. In the yeah. clouds, it's not ambiguous. To have a vision, you've probably seen, heard, or experienced something. Interesting. Yeah, that makes you want to go. I want to be there. Okay, so it's not. A lot of people think of vision. Oh, you know, give me this vision of what my life could be. Well, typically, people are doing things. They're experiencing things. If, if, you're, if you're around people, let's say you're a single, and you're around people that are married and they have great marriages, you're, you're getting a vision for what that could be. And at some point in your life, you say, I want that. And so you start to pursue it. And a real simple illustration of that is when I was really young, just a little guy, my grandfather took me to a professional baseball game, Detroit Tigers playing the New York Yankees. And a guy by the name of Mickey Mantle, who was, who was a Hall of Famer for the New York Yankees, he hit a home run from the left side and from the right side. He was what they call a switch hitter. I'd never seen that in my life. After that game, I had one goal in life. I want to be a baseball player. <laughs> it's because I was exposed to something that I didn't even know existed. And once I knew it existed, I wanted it. Wow. And that's what vision is. You're exposed to something that you want and you believe it's right for you and you go after it. I've never heard it said like that. I've never heard vision put like that where it's something that you've experienced before or you've witnessed it and you've said, I can relate with that. I can identify with wanting to be that. So how can someone – this is a legitimate like question that I just have. How can you know – what your vision should be or like how do you know because there's a lot of different things like maybe you see a baseball player maybe you see an actor maybe you see a president maybe you see you know a ceo maybe you see a teacher how do you know which vision is your vision or mm. should be your vision yeah that's that's a great question and it's not an easy one to answer but i will say this as as a peak performer um you're always wanting to expose yourself to more, okay? If you want more in your relationship, expose yourself to more. If you want more in the area of finance, expose yourself to more. The more you're exposed, the more you see that there's out there. You can't go after something if you don't know it exists right. and there's more out there. Right. So every time you expand yourself, that's why coaching is so powerful because it opens you up to more. It enlarges you as a person. So I would say this, the more you expose yourself to situations and experiences and you grow yourself, the more there'll be a vision there that you, you didn't have before. And then you'll say to yourself, I, you know, I'd like to be there. I would like to, I, I like that area of the country. Hmm. So I like beach or I like mountains or I like this, I like city or I like country. And so then you start to get a vision. Now you start to paint a picture. What you do is you actually take yourself and you see yourself there. I mean, think about it. Can you see yourself, the people that are listening, can you see yourself laying on the beach in front of your beach house? Yep. Can you see yourself on a, living uh, you know, close to a mountain 
and riding down that mountain on your mountain bike or skiing down that mountain on your snowboard? Can you see yourself going into a job that you that you love, that you can't wait to get up to? Can you see yours? So that's what vision is. And I think the more that you are exposed to those things, the more you can create and begin to develop that vision and, wow. and see it fulfilled in your life. That's amazing. So if you take a vision, it's kind of the end goal. And then you can take your vision and kind of reverse engineer it. You got you got your vision header, then you've got all your little bullet points of how to actually achieve it, different steps. So maybe your vision is laying on a beach house. So you're like, okay, so how how can I take my vision that I see, let's say, let's say it is laying in the sand in front of a beach house with my whole family getting to come and vacation for an entire week. Maybe that's my vision. So how do I actually start working towards that vision? Cause I know there'd be, there's gotta be some steps. Cause first you've gotta be like, I feel like the first thing you have to, to know is like, what will it take to actually do that? Cause to have a beach house, it's gonna require money. It's going to require time. It's going to require effort and energy. And then you kind of have to reverse engineer that to figure out how to hit that, uh, how to hit that goal. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'll share this with you. I believe there's steps to vision and, and there's some real specific steps, but I want to talk about the general ones because if you don't get past the general ones, <laughs> you know, most people would love to see themselves, you know, laying on a beach in their beach house or living in the mountain, wherever that's it, right? But what is the percentage of people that actually follow through with that Ooh. vision and see that happen? Interesting. Yeah. So I would say this, vision is birthed somewhere. Okay, it's birthed. I remember watching TV one time and these, these people were surfing in Hawaii I went immediately to my wife and I said, we're going to Hawaii. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it. I didn't know anything, but I knew I was going to go to Hawaii. I hear that all the time from my clients. There's something inside of me that says, I know I'm going to do this. I don't know how, but I know I am. I don't know when, but I know I am. Step one is a vision has to be birthed. Okay. If it's not birthed inside of you, and that sounds like a crazy word, but what I'm talking about is something is deposited in you and you go, I know that's for me. Mm -hmm. And that this, this lifestyle that I'm living right now, it's not that it's bad or whatever, but it's just not for me. I need to be here. It's birthed. So the second thing that happens is there's a death. There's an actual death to vision. And it's where maybe after that first seed is birthed, I'm going to Hawaii two weeks down the road and um, the car breaks down <laughs> and the roof needs, uh, the house needs a new roof. And I'm thinking, I'm probably not going to Hawaii. <laughs> okay. Because all practicality is I got to put the, okay. But hang in there. It's at that point that you never want to give up on your vision. Just because you don't have the resources right now, just because you don't know how you're going to do it, you got to hold on to the belief system. That's the strongest thing that you have in fulfilling a vision is that I believe this is for me. That's That leads me to a thought of like, you said, you said something so key. You said at that point, don't give up. So the vision comes, it's buried and it dies. I'm going to Hawaii. Don't know how, but I'm going. Now my car breaks down and I got to pay the mechanic to get it fixed. But that money I was hoping to use to go to Hawaii. But you said at that point, that's the crucial moment to actually not let it die. Yeah. It's actually the moment to continue to remember it. Yeah. And actually maybe make it a little bit more magnified. Yeah. And maybe make it a little bit louder because Ooh. <clears throat> I think people, actually I know people perish for lack of vision. Okay. That's when you start to perish. Yeah. So you 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 segued a little louder. You used the word a little louder. Why'd you use that word? I don't little? know. I have no idea. Well, let me tell you, when that vision seems to be in the death stage, 
that's when you need to share it. Wow. You need to share it. Now, I'm not saying how or to who, but you need to share it with somebody. And you need, and, 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 and maybe you just need to share it with uh, the, your close confidants, but maybe you share it with other people as well. So here's what I did. I actually shared my vision. I had a speaking engagement and I shared with the whole group. I said, my wife and I are going to Hawaii this year. Wow. I didn't know how. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't know where the resources were coming from. Matter of fact, we just had some debt come in <laughs> through the house, but I shared it. I stepped out. What I believe, I publicly let it come wow. out of my mouth. And guess what happened? A month later, somebody that was listening to that public speaking engagement said, Rich, we have a timeshare in Hawaii that oh we're gosh. not going to be able to use this year. And we're just going to, it's just going to go to waste. Would you be interested in it? And all you have to pay is the cleaning fees and the, and the, the finance fees. And it's, you know, 80 bucks or 180 <laughs> bucks or something like that. But now I've got a place in Hawaii, but I still got a problem because I still don't know how I'm going to pay for the flights. But I'm still, but when I made that public, okay, something happened. And here's what happened. The third stage of vision, there's this rebirth that happens. Something remotivates you, all right? And now my wife and I are going, we know we're going to Hawaii, so let's figure out how are we going to get plane tickets? Where can we get, do we, do we have enough in our, you know, in our, in, a, in, a, in our um, travel I'm it's slipping. Travel me. fund. Yeah. Budget. Or no, you know where you build up points. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Credit card. Yeah, the yeah. credit card points. And yeah, so we yeah. started checking and we decided that we were going to pay off the roof and the other things with our credit card just simply so we would have points. And we <laughs> and we got all of our flights. So now our flights are good. Our Genius. motel's good. And now we're thinking of how we raise that because it was rebirth. Vision was rebirthed in us when we publicly made let it out of the bag. This is what we're going to so do. So you go to your mind goes to creative mode and like how do we get there? Yeah. When you keep it in front, what I mm -hmm. you, what you're when you're talking, I'm like, you know, everyone gets a house and gets a car and gets a job because they start out with a vision. They have a vision of having a family. They have a vision of being able to have a place where they can play ball with their kids and have bonfires with their friends and cook meals for their family. They have this vision. And I feel like then People lose it because the roof goes bad, because the car breaks down. Then they start, they're like, now their vision is just paying that off. And then once that gets paid off, then the dryer breaks. And then, then, then this, 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 this happens. Everything goes wrong. Now their vision is just surviving. Their vision is just getting to Friday. Yeah. How many times do you hear people, mm -hmm. or maybe you feel that, like, I just can't wait to get to Friday. Like that's a really good barometer of someone who's lost their vision. If their vision is Friday, like that wasn't their vision when they started out was just having weekends and only having Fridays to enjoy. I feel like people, when the vision dies, they let it die. They die. They begin to die. Because if you don't have vision, you're dying. You're dying without vision. Vision keeps us alive. I've actually heard, I, I, fact check me, please. <laughs> Maybe you know, but I've heard that a lot of men after they retire, they actually die within maybe 10 years because they had a purpose and they had a vision and they had a job. And then they get to this retirement stage and they're, they've lost their vision and their purpose. Not 100% sure on the stats please look it up but i've i'm i'm pretty sure i've heard that there's this this time period of a lot of a lot of men pass away shortly after they they've retired from the job that they've done for their whole lives yeah i don't know about the statistics on that that's worth looking into but i do know this there's the reason for the expression grumpy old men yeah true <laughs> right yep there's a reason for it. And I agree with you. And um, I work with my clients on that. What's your game plan? What do you want to do? These should be some of the best years of your life. 
And so that's why, you know, we teach a lot about health and fitness. Are you physically healthy enough to enjoy that season in retirement? But Joey, you're exact, exactly right. It's all about vision. What am I going to do? How do I want to do that? What can we do? You know, I think, you know, having a home has been described as the American dream. Yep. But I think, I think that's a crock. I don't like it. I think the American dream should be the fact that we can dream and we can dream limitlessly and that we're not confined just to a house, but we can dream about what we're going to do with our lives and how it, I think the American dream is shifting. It's shifting from just a house and a location to an experience. Hmm. What can we experience in life? How can life be meaningful? And so wow. vision, where vision comes into that is what, what, are, what are you envisioning yourself doing? And when the saboteurs and all the doubt and all the negativity and all the things that say you really shouldn't be doing this because you, you, you're committed to this house, you, you got you to gotta let that go and you got to figure out a way to verbally begin to share what is your vision. So when I work with clients, we do vision boards and we have that printed and then I make them say, this is what I'm going to do. So like you'll actually have like a, a board where they'll print out pictures of maybe they do see themselves in a beach house or something and they'll put a, that picture in front of them so that they can, that's a, that's a practical way, <coughs> excuse me, a practical mm -hmm. way to keep that vision alive yeah. instead of just letting it die. Yeah. And then we hold them accountable. Are you going to write a book? All right. How long is it going to take? All right. When are you going to do it? What are the breakdowns? You know, and, you know, vision, having a vision is, is you said it earlier. You start with that vision, but then now you come back and you start to work the process. Mm. What's it going to take? So you start with who are you going to tell? Who's going to be your partner in this? And I encourage people to have a vision partner because then you can get there faster. Because two work better than one. Yeah. So who's my vision partner? Who am I going to go to when I'm discouraged? And then what are the steps? What am I going to do every single day? I, I made a I made a commitment. This is the first time I, I, that I went to Hawaii. Now we've been to Hawaii seven times. Wow. From that first time, my first time I went to Hawaii, I said, "What am I going to do every single day? I'm going to do one thing every single day until I go to Hawaii." So what's your vision? What are you going to do every single day? to reach that vision. So those are the practical steps to vision, as well as the ones I gave you, the three, the birth of it, the death of it, and then the rebirth, the rebirth. of it. Amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So some of the practical steps it, it, that you can actually do um, to, <laughs> to prevent your vision from dying. And when vision dies, a lot of times people die with it. You start to just live to pay the bills and live to put on the new roof and you, you don't even remember why you're doing it. Hmm. I, I've heard people say like, I feel like I just go to work to pay for my car that gets me to work and gets me back home to sleep so I can go back to work. And that is a sign that vision is lost and you're simply just looping and living. And so I encourage you to go back through and maybe even re-listen to this episode every now and then um, to just keep that vision alive. And then as Rich said, maybe print out some pictures or draw or write down something that you're actually envisioning and something that you actually don't want to die, something that's so important to you. Maybe it's that house. Maybe it's a family. Maybe it's, a, maybe it's graduating college. Maybe it's something else. But whatever that is, we encourage you to write that down, keep it alive, keep it in front of you. And thank you again for joining us on this episode of Five Ideas. We can't wait to see you in the next one. Talk to you soon.